Hello, everyone. Very quickly, I would like to talk about the importance of recognizing motion in this world. There is something called movement. There's something called your dynamic states of being. And what that means is we have a recognition that when we accelerate things a bit more, we suddenly get a different experience. That moment when you uh, ran a bit harder, you caught the bus. So similarly, there needs to be an awareness of working with the abstraction that is movement. Now, it seems as if when the human being is born, he is conditioned in a manner where his attention is on uh, him first moving his idea in a self-aware manner and then moving his body. And life is about dynamic states, so you begin to see that you need to have uh, the preparation of acknowledging the stillness when you're wrong, young and when you're very old. Because uh, the motion in your life is keeping your definitions in, the, in front of you. And so to be aware of this motion at a young age means that before your life is really getting going, you're aware of the stillness and silence in which experience continues to be present in uh, before the world of noise almost, before you suddenly go into social function and has to, you have to be in uh, and develop self-sustaining systems for your survival in uh, society and culture. So pretty much what I would like to say is that as you pay attention to that moment before you had to move or you wanted to move or the movement was the only answer, be aware of your present moment. Be aware of how you're existing right now as I'm speaking, right this moment. And you will see that awareness is simple. It is one of those simple things that you always knew you existed uh, before everything else. It's as if that comfort you have and how you're acknowledging yourself is very deeply rooted in this knowing that you exist. And so this knowing is where you begin to observe the intelligence of nature that is within the form of man, the life that is within the form, the life form that we are. But the life is always beyond definition and the form is the definition. So this is where the awareness needs to be situated in a natural manner. What that means is it's healthy to read a book uh, when your life, you really need the information, you're really going to see what that book has to say. Uh, it is not useful if someone is telling you read that book and you're reading it for someone else's expectation because then you are not giving yourself the existential allowance to receive the changes and the advancements you make. I see many people living in conscious ways, but they're not aware that they're living consciously, so it's not conscious living. It's as if the person, of course, wakes up to do prayer in the morning. The person, of course, wakes up to do meditation. The person, of course, wakes up to do his work. But in his action of doing something in this life, how observant is he to the nature of being? This simply said can be as playful as a golden ladybug on your jacket. You begin to see simplicity is acknowledged actually through first simplicity, then an awareness of complexity, then back to simplicity again. Because that's how you know it's simple. That's how we have another state of consciousness to revert back to. That's how we have spectrums in the sense that there are different experiences within the same life system, in the life process. So that silence is self-awareness before there is a manifestation which can ident be identified with. So that moment before I speak, there's a silence that is carrying everything. That moment before I move, there's a stillness that is about to burst into the joyous expression. And when you see it is natural to exist in any way, you will see the power of not the mind of man, but the mind of existence. There are many ways that we can observe our conception and it doesn't matter how much we are doing it in, uh, in alignment with our society or culture or whatever group we're in. 
Our group's focus is one that is based on the individual focus. Each individual has had to get together to even be able to come up with a theory. So individuality is making up the complex theories that want to explain things. So the study of individuality is only done through self-awareness. There is nothing you can write down, but even if you do, it will be a reflection. That recognition that everything in your life is suggesting your thinking, everything in life is suggesting how you're aware of things, is profound. Because sometimes you're aware of things beyond the thought, beyond the shape of it having to be an idea. It's like that moment when you're in love, but it's not shape. So it's not the word love. It is just an experience of you uh, uh, being aware of the vision that's already within you. Sometimes the greatest moments that a lover finds is all the ability of love he had, but he had never released it. All the ability he had of knowing and learning and experiencing and becoming efficient in this world, but was not uh, open because we did not look where in our own eyes. And this is not the same as looking in the mirror in your own eyes. This is you closing your eyes to look at the idea of you and recognizing that framework of we having ideas and we being thinkers is inefficient, incapable, and not enough. We need to understand the self beyond an other that could suggest it to be other ones, to be something else. What that means is my whole life I was functioning based on knowing myself, based on how my experiences of communication had had been with other people. It's like that moment where you realize that person on X Factor, American Idol, that person in that audition was not there just as if he just saw the ad yesterday and he went there. It was as if his whole life he had been doing an action that was leading up to a moment of significance. And so, so many people leave their moments of significance as something that they need to reach rather than realizing the significance in how they are there right now. Before thinking of you needing enlightenment, nirvana or self-help, who is there and what is there and in what capacity and is capacity based on space and time or can it be an experiential thing beyond it? It's very important to become aware of your dynamic state of being because it is suggesting you the orientation you have uh, from chaos to order. Do you recognize this? In life we have different situations. One situation you go, you're prepared for, so there's more order in your awareness than chaos. Some situations you go, the order is not prepared for and there's chaos. But man's mind always has an ability to take chaos and to make order out of it. Because that's simply what's happened. When you look at human beings in their development as conscious beings, they just began speaking at some time, you know? They just began speaking at some moment. Imagine the, not just uh, your first words as a kid, the first words of any human being. The significance of that was just like a new person making, doing a new action and it was just that sense of novelty that has brought us here now. We must realize there's nothing wrong with our world because it was the inspiration of the new that has carried it so far. So when we are no longer in a problematic state with our world, there's no longer a problematic individual who is lost, who has to go change the world. The world, the world is changed within your gaze, within your eyes, within your depth and self-awareness to an existential form. Many of us think the ego is a web we're tangled in, but you begin to see that the spider it was not creating uh, a trap for itself. It was doing a natural expression where the web came into being. And the web was uh, sticky for another sense of identification, but maybe not for the self that originated. When you really see where the intentions of your life came from, where the intentions of your existential design and experiential design is coming from how you're experiencing life, that is rooted in a transcendental state of being beyond space and time. So in limitation, of course we're not going to find something. Of course if I'm saying man can't see, he's not going to see. Man can see, but he needs to see clearly and the lack of him seeing clearly right now is the blessing. All these objections to truth is the blessing because it is enhancing our perception of truth. So similarly, mankind 
needs to know at his youth how to be aware that he is the stillness before he moves and he is the silence before he moves. After you have moved in life, then as you are, uh, let's say, reaching the, the end of your physical composition, you begin to see that it's very important now to see that you are transitioning from the noise and movement again into a knowing of stillness. From stillness, we come into this life crying because the doctor slaps us too hard. <laughs> and then we recognize that the forms that we are identifying ourselves with is not us. And that's when we suddenly realize we have a talent we did not know before. Because our act of creation in the novel moment gives us a conviction and a knowing greater than the suffering we've had before. When you realize you as, a, as the human experiencer are found within the greatness of novelty, you are untouched because your newest idea is unheard. So the newest words in a field that is unexplored will be the pioneering of a greater methodology to be aware of self. All methods are used until they're no longer needed. You have a ship, you have a destination, you have a journey until you get to the destination. Once the being recognizes the transcendental destination, the transcendental destination was always in the beginning that it was all in a door. That door is opened by you and also closed by you and also not part of your experience as if you are moving beyond the conception as the consumer as the observance of the Rumi, a very Sufi mystic poet from 800 years ago in ancient Persia, I believe, or Iran, or Turkey, I don't know, anywhere of these places. Uh, Rumi has this quote where it's translated in this manner that he says, just a second. And really, there is no psychology or its study that will help you other than your study of what a psyche means to you and what you mean to yourself, guys. What I am communicating is not the last uh, required knowing of man at this time. When man begins to realize he's a transcendental being, his associations in this life process are moving from a body uh, that has a mind into being a mind that is a body. And as the body is a projection within the mind, you begin to see that you are within the knower. The knower is within all things. It is just that you are having a relationship with life that is confusing. And so this relationship is not something you've uh, voluntarily had, you know, it's, it's, it's involuntarily, it's your conditioning, the things that you're introduced to, it's how you're made into being somebody, and then uh, in, in your greater explosion in the future and workings, realizing that somebody doesn't have to be just the body, it's defined at first. You're not just who you think you are at first. Because I certainly did, and it caused a lot of unnecessary thoughts, un unnecessary depression. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, am I going to be in this case forever? Oh, I'm going to be in this. And then I realized literally, like two months later, I changed as a person. My ideas were different. So <laughs> don't take depression and stress seriously, but realize if you have your attention on it, it seems that stress has no reason to leave. If you're constantly thinking about the ideology, if you're thinking about the concept, I'm stressed. And to be honest, a lot of stress and pressure, uh, a lot of stress and um, uh, incapability and inefficiency in social communication comes from the orientation of the being going into its abstract realms rather than being presently in, in the moment where he is. What that means is if you're just walking in a park and something happens, you have more attention to it than if you have beats head to deep, don't go looking for other realities, and then you will get a multidimensional experience. So what that means is, in 
a spiritual seeker, not that everyone's a spiritual seeker, but a spiritual seeker is someone who's seeking to really see where his unknown is leading him, leading his known. And so the knower is not working for himself. The knower is not an idea that is trying to make that idea be the greatest thing ever. The knower on some subtle level knows that he will dissolve so there is an instantaneous acceptance that you are knowing things in an instant. And this projection, uh, which is not from the idea that you're a body that has a, that has a mind, the mind is thinking this, but that you are the experience of a greater mind in which such a body is present. In. When you see that you don't have thoughts, but you're aware of thoughts being present, that gives you a more profound ability to handle and work with your abstraction. You could very elegantly think of the human imagination as that moment when a drop hits a lake, a pond, and the ripples for a temporal period project a waved reality, but then come back to stillness, come back to that, come back to that center that does not need to be in the center because it is not anywhere else. You must find the fruits of your consciousness, but knowing that you are the roots of your understanding, that everything is within you, everything you need. The pilot of consciousness is his plane of existence, and that is why he navigates very smoothly uh, through any clouds of confusion. We are acknowledging temporal reality and the senses as elusive still, but this is something, of course, that should be tackled in the future in the sense that the mystic should break out of the mystic's aura. That an aura was given just for the being to develop. And that development is the profoundity that when you look at what you don't know, you are always found. Much more sense of peace.